Hey guys, this is Dr. Ken here, and uh, sorry this is not an ASMR video. Um, I've been a bit just fixated on uh, wireless mice lately, especially wireless gaming mice. Um, and I just want to do a quick review of uh, my use experience of the um, ASUS uh, Tough Gaming M4 Wireless. So um, I picked up this mouse because I was thinking of getting a wireless mouse that actually could fit the bill, could fit all of my use needs. Um, however, um, as you can see in my previous video about the Corsair Qatar Pro Wireless, um, that did not work out so well. It had no onboard, uh, onboard memory, onboard storage profiles. Uh, for my button mapping uh, and I am happy to say that this does so this for the price that it's in for the price bracket that it's in it actually served almost all the purposes that I needed to do so um, this has a um, both a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection mode here and also a Bluetooth mode so that's very nice uh, it has dual modes unfortunately it does not have a uh, triple mode so you cannot use it as a wired mouse um, it does charge uh, using um, well not really charge it uses uh, batteries so you can use either double a or triple a and uh, it does come with this converter that uh, allows you to use both uh, either a, um, not both, but either a double A AA or a triple A, and then you can use this triple A in this little case that will change it into the size of a double A. And then you can put the case back on and it works perfectly. Um, so, yes, it does have all of the uh, button mapping, it has um, uh, stored on there. You don't need the Armory Crate software. Uh, for it to remember those things, the DPI, the button mapping, um, all those things. It has no RGB, so you don't need to, you don't need the mouse to remember that. Um, the buttons, you know, they feel just, you know, nothing special about them. They feel normal. Uh, there's really uh, not much to say about them. Uh, there is a little bit of pre-travel and also, well, a little bit of post-travel as well. But they are very clicky and tactile, and this mouse is very light. Um, I don't remember exactly how light it is um, right off the top of my head, but um, you can always find that information very easily. And, of course, the weight is going to vary depending on what kind of battery you put in there. Um, everything just kind of feels really, um, well, lightweight. I don't want to say well-built because this is not built like a tank. Actually, from the week that I've been using it, it developed a sort of a creak. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, um, there is definitely a creak going on, you know, when you hold it, the mouse really tightly. Uh, that is when you apply pressure to this specific spot, though, right here on the, and only on, on the right side of the mouse. I think it's because this outer lining and the case is not quite flush with each other. That's why we have this sound. Um, so yeah, I wish ASUS would have made this mouse just a little bit, you know, better built. Uh, unfortunately, it does not really, um, it's really not up to my standards in terms of, you know, how mice should be built nowadays. Uh, everything is made of cheap plastic, really. Um, I'm not saying that uh, just to, um, you know, make it look bad, but uh, it, it is really not, um, not a material that gives you a lot of confidence, uh, especially when you're when you're holding your hand. You know, it doesn't it doesn't warp or anything, but there's a creak, and also everything is just you know lightweight, textured plastic. Um, I have felt absolutely no difference between this and other plastics. They say um, Asus says that this is um, this contains uh, silver ions uh, in the plastic uh, for it to. Uh, provide antibacterial effects. I, of course, will not be able to test that or to confirm or deny if it actually works. Um, I think the good thing about this is that it gives you a, an extra, you know, peace of mind. Um, the PTFE feet, they feel really nice. Uh, this, I can tell, is high quality because the Qatar Pro Wireless, that, that feet really, even though the Qatar had a, a wider uh, glide pad um, 
it did not feel as smooth and easy to uh, move around as this does. So I can tell for sure, uh, especially in comparison to the Qatar Pro wireless, that uh, these pads are just much better. Um, and the switch is also made better because you can see there's a little groove here that allows your nail to go in there and easily switch between the modes. So um, if you want to come back to just it being off, you can use your nail to fine tune that location. Whereas on most of the other switches, you kind of have to put both of your fingers in there and use the nail from two fingers to try to adjust that. So that's one good thing. Um, but uh, I'm still going to have to return this mouse. And the reason for that is actually very simple. Um, the reason is this mouse has terrible um, motion onset delay. And what is that? So for a wired mice, you never have to worry about anything uh, about it falling asleep, right? So it's always on. The moment you move it, you know, if you go to the bathroom and you come back, uh, the moment you move your mouse, you want your mouse to move on the screen. Uh, this doesn't do that. So this is not the mouse um, going to sleep mode because you can adjust the sleep mode timer in the Armory Crate software. And you can set it to one minute, three minute, five minutes, or never. Um, so that's not sleep mode. Uh, for example, if I just go out and to my kitchen to grab um, a glass of water, that takes like what? 30 seconds, not even a minute, I come back, I move the mouse, and you notice a very significant delay. So uh, it may not be like, you know, two, three seconds long, but it's definitely uh, a fraction of a second that will make you notice it. So when you first move the mouse, when you come back, you know, after 30, after 30 seconds, uh, the first movement is not registered, okay? So maybe like, I don't know, like, you know, 300, 400 milliseconds of delay, you just move it, oh, it's not moving, and then you move it again, oh, okay, that now, now it's tracking, now it's tracking. And it does that after just like 15, 20, 30 seconds, okay? So um, this is under a minute. So I hope the, the mouse is not falling asleep. I think it's because this sensor, the PAW3311, uh, this sensor, is trying to conserve batteries so much that it simply um, cannot respond fast enough when you move it immediately after a brief rest period. Uh, so that's a shame because let's say it depends on what kind of game you're playing or what kind of application you're using it for. Um, that's a shame because if you need sudden quick movements of the mouse after just actually quite frankly a brief period of of stationary, of, be, of, of it being stationary, and it doesn't register. That can be chaotic, that can be disastrous depending on what you're doing. So um, in a game, you know, if I'm just kind of like sitting there for a while and I don't move it, but then I suddenly need to make a flick and the flick doesn't register, um, that's problematic. So I can't have that. Everything else has been pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the clicks. You know, nice and tactile. Scroll wheel feels great. The scroll click feels fine. DPI switch is great. Side buttons, you know, a little squishy, but normal. You know, they're still tactile. Um, the delay on the, uh, what is it? On the 2.4 gigahertz wireless and the Bluetooth 5.1 they're great. You know, 5.1 is for when I'm working, it's for when I'm browsing the internet. Latency is low enough that it really doesn't matter and it saves battery. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz, of course, the uh, 1000 hertz polling rate, one millisecond response time, that's for gaming. You need that response time. Um, everything works as it should. I'm quite frankly surprised at how well Bluetooth has gotten, um, how good uh, it's gotten to, you know, I, I feel like I don't really need to have 2.4 gigahertz because 5.1 Bluetooth is really fast enough, especially if you're just doing casual gaming or, you know, nothing that requires, um, you know, Im uh, immediate or uh, very demanding uh, mouse movements. So 
Yeah, I'll be returning it because of this one one reason, uh, one reason only. It's because of the um, motion delay. I just can't have that, no matter how great this mice this mouse is. Uh, the battery life is average. It's really not that great. Uh, I use the uh, double double uh, no triple A battery, so the smaller one, triple A, and uh, it got three days. And I use it for about uh, you know ten hours every day. So for that, you know, I think it really, really for me, it only lasts about 30 hours. But, you know, that's using the AAA. And I've been using the AA, but I did not have enough time to test it all out. So um, AA could very well last you a week or more. But still, you know, that's, that's okay. That's not bad. But if you compare it to something like you know the uh, the uh, new Razer mice and the uh, the new um, the new Logitech mice. Uh, well, maybe not new, but the Logitech and the Razer mice that use um, you know replaceable batteries. The battery life is really not that amazing on the ASUS. So I wish they could uh, make the battery life a little bit better and also uh, fix the uh, onset uh, motion delay in the future versions of this mouse or maybe in the future ASUS mice in general. Um, so my two my two cons, you know, for this uh, for this mouse really is just um, the average battery life and more importantly the motion onset delay. So yeah I will be returning this, otherwise overall this is a pretty good mouse. Much better than the Qatar Pro Wireless, but then again, it does cost more than the Qatar Pro Wireless. So um, I have been pleasantly surprised by this, but then also sorely disappointed. But thank you for listening and have a nice day. Have a good night. And I'm Dr. Ken. Checking out. Bye bye.